Ah, the wonderful month of May. The weather is blooming and the people blossoming. It's time to buckle up and ace those exams. Get those vacations planned for summertime is just around the corner. Enjoy the fruits of your labors, my dear viewers. It's time to go out and show out those summer bods. <coughs> Enjoy the fruits of your labors, my dear viewers, for summertime is just around the corner. It's time to go out and show out those incredible personalities and mental fortitude on the outside. Throw away those misogynistic thoughts. That line of thinking has no business in this video, but a place does come to mind where there is still work to be done, where there can be some improvements on the patriarchy, a place where we as a people, a collective, can show our progression in society on the biggest of stages, on the biggest of screens, with the biggest of companies. No, I'm not talking about Scott Lang, San Francisco, and no, I am not talking about the Mushroom Kingdom. No, my dear viewer, of course the place where I'm talking about the city being destroyed by its societal norms of the yesteryears. Of course, I'm talking about the city under the sea. I'm only going to ask this once, and only once shall I ask, where are the body positive mer people, and where is Dove when you need them most? Welcome Disney's The Little Mermaid, a film that some might say arrived a little too late to the party, but as a brilliant and up-and-coming progressive writer, Jessica Gao once taught me in the world of entertainment a quote that I am willing to share with you, but a quote that I wouldn't quote me on as fact, fashionably late, is always a statement. The Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Mulan, Cinderella, Dumbo, Aladdin, Alice in Wonderland, Maleficent, Pinocchio, Christopher Robin, 101 Dalmatians, Peter Pan, and Wendy. <sighs> no, no. Don't be confused, my dear viewer. Don't misread the screaming from our dear friend Ryan Gosling as a cry for help, but as a scream of ignorance, for I have forgotten Cruella. But we have no time for that. We have no time for a person of the paper skin and walking variety. This is, of course, The Little Mermaid, a film following the wide-eyed, pure-hearted, adventurous, and vocally talented mermaid, Ariel, a mermaid fascinated by the world she cannot have, a world she does not belong to, but a world she longs for. Of course, I'm not talking about SeaWorld, and God no, not marine world, but the surface world, but not sea world, on the surface world. Watch as our particular character, Ariel, falls in love with our surface walking lover boy, Prince Eric, a romance that some, of course, of the unprogressive variety will deem as unnatural, unconventional, and in most cases, a simple fantasy, but not for our Ariel. Watch as she uses her charm, charisma, and good-hearted nature to win over the love of Prince Eric, all with the trials and the tribulations of not having a voice to achieve her goals due to the evil, but now misunderstood, sea witch Ursula. Watch as an actual strong, intelligent, and determined young female character achieve her goals of love and the longing of a world she wants most. A beautiful ending for a beautiful story with a beautiful message. As always, I want to thank you guys for listening to my review for The Little Mermaid, 1989. But now, the main course has finally arrived at your dinner table. Fashionably late, as all things should be. In The Little Mermaid 2023, as much as Ariel is of course diverse, so is the story. Say hello to Ariel, a wide-eyed, pure-hearted, adventurous, and vocally talented mermaid, a mermaid fascinated by a world that she cannot have, a world in which she does not belong to,
but a world she longs for. But with that being said, uh, romance is no longer needed in this story. The gibble gabs, the whatchamacallits, and the doohickeys are more than enough for this mermaid. The film is no longer focused on what humans love, but on what humans hate. Coconuts. Ariel, my dear mermaid out of water, whenever you get the chance, I must recommend you give it a try. A pina colada at your local Senor Frogs. But let's talk Ariel, or more specifically, the actress chosen out of thousands, some might even say millions of candidates to play such a generational character. Of course, we're talking about Halle Bailey, an actress reuniting with Disney in a more influential and inspiring way than ever before, even more than their first initial partnership all the way back in the year of 2012. A film kickstarting her to the fame and glory that she knows now from Disney Channel's own original, Let It Shine, a film I do remember in the yesteryears as a mere lad and a film I do remember fondly enjoying. Halle Bailey is now Ariel, much like how Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man and Mark Hamill is Luke Skywalker. Her singing voice, her talent, and simply her range is sincerely and genuinely nothing less than off the charts. And no, I am not talking about off the charts, much in the ways of Queen Cleopatra not making the charts at all, but in a way where the talent of her incredible singing must be dipping their hands in the cookie jar when it comes to her acting. As much as her singing is to be beholding, her acting is to be forgotten. The facial expressions and the whimsical personality of the original are about as non-existent as the body positive mer people. And while for most sirens, they sing their songs, luring sailors to the death for the sake of food, for Ariel in The Little Mermaid 2023, her song of sirens is unfortunately for the sake of bad acting. Melissa McCarthy is Ursula, a character who was once known as the not-so-body positive and jealous sea witch of the murky depths, manipulating and tricking a young and naive Ariel into a deal for her voice, taking advantage of the young mermaid and her desires for the surface world, all in the sake of fulfilling her selfish needs and desires to be skinny. But lucky for us, and more frankly, Melissa McCarthy, that is no longer a need for the women of modern filmmaking. Much like the character in the final act of the film, her performance as Ursula in The Little Mermaid 2023 is larger than life. Melissa McCarthy plays a character that simply no one else in the history of life would ever be able to play, no matter the talent, no matter the skill, no matter the dedication, as always, Melissa McCarthy shines again as Melissa McCarthy. Brighter than the sun that Rob Stark flew into at the end of The Eternals, and so bright, in fact, that the writers made the quick, executive, and in my opinion, the necessary decision to take away the voices of her eels. Did she take their voices much like Ariel, or is it simply because... There is no one better than the screen presence of Melissa McCarthy. But in the case of those significant improvements to Ursula's character, simply wasn't enough to satisfy the urge and the craft needed to satisfy a modern audience member such as myself. Much like Melissa McCarthy, more original, innovative, and improved choices have to be made to update our characters of the yesteryears. Say hello to Marvel's Katie, Aquafina, an actress blessed with the same leaves, cut from the same cloth, and follows the same glorious direction as the Melissa McCarthy School of Rock playing herself. Watch as Aquafina plays Aquafina in the shape of a duck. And while you're at it, 
make sure to give a standing ovation right in the middle of the movie for you are blessed. A movie and a concert, all for the price of one admission ticket, is more than enough for a five-star rating. Sebastian the Crab and Flounder the Fish, two characters that for better and mostly for worse are and act as if they are the same two characters from the original animated film. No, actually, in fact, when I look back fondly over these two characters, I truly only have one problem when watching their journey. The question that still has been left lingering in the back of my mind, distracting me from the wonderful performances and musical numbers. No, I am not talking about the diversity. No, I am not talking about the CGI. And no, we're not even talking about Princess Eric's Shaggy Good Boy. No, my dear viewer, when I think about Sebastian the Crab and Flounder the Fish and The Little Mermaid 2023, I simply wonder to myself, where is my local crab jack? James Cameron, it's time to get back to the drawing board. Break out your flip phone and dust off those connections for The Little Mermaid 2023 blows the technique of underwater CGI swimming out of the blowhole. Avatar 2, the way of water, more like the way of mediocrity. Take your notes and delay your shooting for this is cinema. Disney has done it again, and I must say, in glorious fashion, with the budget of only $200 million, pack your bathing suits and put on your floaties, for you will truly be immersed in the world under the sea. Of course, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but yet again, this is yet another perfect live action adaptation of old Disney stories from the yesteryears. Just another story down for the history books. Snow White and the seven doors that aren't doors can't come soon enough. So make sure you give your thanks and your round of applause for Melissa McCarthy, for Aquafina, for Halle Bailey, and more importantly, to Disney. Thank you, Disney, for this re-updated version of Ariel and the Little Mermaid. Of course, as always, I want to thank you, the viewer. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. With an absolutely jam-packed month of June with the likes of Spider-Man, but animated. The Flash, but rebooted. Indiana Jones, but old. And Optimus Prime with gorillas. Wait, that actually sounds pretty fun. The point is, much like The Little Mermaid, I am much watch entertainment. And honestly, with that being said, make sure you go check out my Marvel's Phase 5 video that I just posted. And again, I want to thank you all for watching. And well, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.